Hello, everyone. Welcome to Practical GCP. Today, I'll cover the third part of the Conversational Analytics Agent series, and I'll be focusing on how do you run a front end with Cloud Run and IAP to interact with the agent we deployed uh, with ADK and Agent Engine in the previous one, um, and specifically, how do you use IAP, um, which I'll talk about in a minute, to secure your Cloud Run application. So again, uh, this quick disclaimer, the view and the opinions expressed in this video are my own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of my employer. OK, let's crack on. Previously, we talked about how to use the Conversational Analysis API to optimize the natural language to SQL process. We also talked about how to build our ADK agent and also deploy to Agent Engine, including using a not the best, but a notebook to interact with all Agent Engine APIs in a very simple way. However, without a front end, uh, you can't really scale this to large group of users on also including tracking the user sessions. It could become quite complex. So today, we will focus on how you can actually deploy your lightweight front end, and including uh, a small back end, which is particularly used to make sure the interaction or the communication between the front end and agent engine is kept secure and between the two Google Cloud services. right? Uh, but most importantly, how do you know uh, the users, right? who they are, when they're accessing the front end. And this is the most important part and where IAP comes in. So IAP is uh, called the Identity Aware Proxy. And it's basically saying, if you have not authorized as a user with your front end, and then you cannot access the front end, and therefore you cannot make calls, um, to the agent engine and therefore using the conversational analytics API with BigQuery. So all of these is not possible unless you're authorized user. So IAP is a feature that's been available for Cloud Run for quite a long time, but only until recently, this became a very simple option that you can literally just tick a box and to enable it on Cloud Run directly. So previously you have to set up a load balancer. You have to enable this on the back end. And it was, I created a video previously uh, on this one. Um, but the new way of using IAP is all you have to do is to tick this box and Google Cloud takes away all the complexity behind it. So there is a video from the Google Cloud tech called the Secure Cloud Run with the IAP created by Martin and Ruchika. So, it's uh, less than 10 minutes, but it's explaining IAP really well. And it's also uh, explaining the latest of the Cloud Run feature with just a click of a button and you can have IAP enabled. Right. So let me show you what I've done here. Uh, I'll start with a demo and then I will run through the code so you know exactly how to deploy yourself. What you see now is a Cloud Run application uh, deployed with without IAP at this stage. So you see there is a URL, and right now, because it allows all public access, and this is publicly accessible. And the code I'm going to share with you later on is the one that has IAP enabled. So let's have a look at the front end first, so you can see what is the some of the basic functionality we have in here. I just click on this one. Uh, you can see here is the basic e-commerce analytics interface. I have this area showing the uh, what's coming back from the backend. And then here I can ask questions. So I'm just going to show you an example of uh, this is working as is expected. Uh, what I've done is every time I press send, um, it will show us the text that's been uh, I've been using, right? So here is the total number made per month for the last 120 days. For each month, show it in a format as month and year. So keep in mind, because this is natural language, uh, I've so far have not given it a lot of prompt. So 
what this means is the more detail you, you're going to give it uh, in the interactive user interface, the better results is going to yield, right? So if you look at this, I have actually uh, tried to format a little bit with uh, some sort of kind of a, making a little bit pretty. Um, here you can see I've displayed the question I asked, the SQL statement, uh, try to format it to look a little bit better. You can see this is the SQL in there. And then this is the generated um, results, which I was trying to use uh, Gemini to make it look a little bit better uh, with a HTML layout, right? So you can see this is what is done. Uh, let's just validate if this is actually done the right thing. Very quickly, if I go to BigQuery, run this SQL, you can see I've got the same results. So yeah, so this instruction has been passed into converting, you can see converting the month and year to give me a better uh, displayed outcome. And this would also aid the uh, large language models to give you something that better you can, basically you can see the outcome a little bit better. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna run through two more examples. So you can see uh, if I just follow up with another question of how about the past 30 days instead of uh, 120 days. And then what happens is this will remember the previous context uh, because now it's using the session. So while that's loading, let me go to the back end. So you can see previously when we just started using it, there's nothing in there. If I just go away and come back, you can see this has created a, a browser session. I will show you in a bit and how it actually knows this stuff. So you can see I've actually made two requests already, right? I've made two requests, but there's only a single session. So the way it works in the background is it knows um, it knows the user ID. So you here you see this is where it gets interesting. I've not enabled IAP yet. This is the default user I've actually put into the code. So this is just a user with a browser session. So it knows is it your session, but it doesn't know who I am at the moment. Right, so keep that in mind. So, but but it, but it works, right? It's got the session ID. Uh, it has created a session. It knows there is a user on the other side, which goes to the default user. Uh, if I go back, this is the results. So you see, uh, it still knows what I was talking about. Now the result isn't exactly what I hoped for in the formatting, but if you look at this SQL, let's just look at this in here. If we run this again, so. Um, you can see this is like a, an, it still went back and did the last 30 days. And then a, the question I asked was total order made per month, right? So the total amount of orders, yeah, made per month. So it still knows the context from the question I was asking previously. Okay, let's ask one more, which is the last one. This one is a slightly more complex. So it's talking about total orders by product category by month from the past 120 days for each month, show it in a format like this. Okay, now you see here it's done some complex drawings. If you look at my previous video, I've explained how it managed to figure out uh, to use the, you know, the join keys and how to put them together. And just for the sake of uh, easier to read, if we look at here, I've just done a bit of formatting here. So you can see this is what it was doing to uh, join the the product category and the, the order month of the year, then the month and the total number of orders in each one of those categories. So you can see here is below, is displayed all of these in the same order. Obviously it needs a bit of tidy up on, you know, how to uh, display the month properly in this particular case, uh, but you can see it's got the right results back. So the books, we've got 11 of these, right? The closing, we've got seven. Yeah, so you get the idea. So this is actually a uh, good example of using an interactive user interface, deploy to Cloud Run, and communicating with Agent Engine, and therefore in the background using the Conversational Analytics API to do the, the actual nat natural language to uh, SQL conversion. Right, now I want to show you uh, something different. As you noticed, so far, it doesn't know who I am, right? And instead, right now, uh, I'm gonna enable identity aware proxy. Keep in mind the code I gave it to you in the repo, uh, which I will share as part of this video, has already uh, using 
they've been using this as a default. So when you deploy using that code, uh, it will automatically enable identifier proxy. Keep in mind it's still in preview. So you have to, uh, when you deploy or when I deployed using the G Cloud uh, command, I was still using the beta, right? So later on, you might have to swap it out when it goes to GA. Now let me update it. Okay, now it's been deployed. So to avoid uh, the browser session from getting confused, I've started a new incognito window, right? So in this one, uh, let me just paste into the uh, URL of the app. So now you can see the, the app is no longer accessible directly on the internet because I've enabled uh, IAP. This basically uh, will redirect you to your either the Google identity either the Google identity provider or your own identity provider, depending on how you've set it up. Um, but then what you have to do is log in, right? Let me let me just do this. Okay, so now I'm logged in, right? So this should be a new browser ID and a also a new uh, session altogether. And it should also understand uh, who I am because I've just logged in, right? Let me ask the same question again on the total orders made per month from the last 120 days. Okay, now you see this is working, right? So it's giving us the same thing, but what I wanna show you is what is happening behind the scenes. Okay, now we're back to the TCP console. What we just done in the user interface is we made a request to the backend, but that's based on uh, I have logged in as a user. So you should know who I am now because I have IAP enabled. The big difference it makes in there is in the backend, you can see this is the agent engine session. So in the code, I'll show you what I've been doing uh, to get the identity of the user. But you can see here now I've got the user ID as my demo account, right? This is no longer the default user. So this is how uh, you can associate the IAP authorized user with the agent engine backend. Let me quickly go through the code with you. So the structure of this uh, repository is pretty straightforward and it's been shared with you under practical GCP examples, ADK agents front end and ecom analysts front end. So in here, you've got a bunch of useful environment variables. So feel free to replace this with yours. This is how to run it locally with UV. Uh, here you have a bunch of permissions you can add. This is creating a service account. This is adding the API, uh, pl the AI platform user role. This is the one that required for Cloud Run to interact with all the uh, services deployed to Agent Engine at the project level. So. And then you have the deployment command, which uses the cloud build. Uh, this bunch of environment variables gets passed in uh, so that it can deploy the whole thing to Cloud Run. So I have validated this working well. There's a bunch of resources in here on uh, very useful ones. The IAP auth examples, uh, which I'll go through uh, in our code in a bit. And then uh, the documentation on how to enable IAP directly on Cloud Run and also the simplest way to enable IAP on Cloud Run. This is the video uh, created by the Google Cloud Tech, the one I showed you earlier in the slide. Um, okay, so project structure-wise, uh, if you look at the left, you've got the source folder where you have some static files, that's the CSS, and then you have the templates, which you, we have the, the base HTML and the index.html. Just kind of that simple UI. I'm using uh, HTML, uh, HTMX, um, and uh, Tailwind CSS in there. So it's just kind of making it slightly, look slightly better, right? The main thing is this uh, main.py. Uh, we, there's a few things I wanna talk about here. First of all is uh, how it gets the user information. So you can see I put a bunch of comments in here, but basically you can get the user email through this request.headers.get with the x dash, uh, authenticates the user email or ID. Um, the, there is a repository that I've shared with you um, also in the resources and the readme. This is very, very useful. Um, I'll spend like maybe a couple of minutes talking about that. So this is the repo I'm referring to. 
you've got three folders in here. Um, this is all about how do you uh, get the, the information of the user uh, with the IAP service, right? So hello world, uh, this one actually is an example without the IAP uh, headers because it's not doing anything. It's just basically this is your public app, right? Hello user, however, uh, is starting to use things like user email and user ID. This is getting from these two headers, the authenticated user email and authenticated user ID. Uh, the difference between number two and number three is number two, it only gets the headers, but it doesn't actually do any additional validation. Just in case these headers can be spoofed, right? So if you go to number three, you can see in here you get the uh, the headers, but then you also have this user library to verify the email and ID. And the way this works is is basically using uh, the JWT token to decode it with the keys in here. So if it doesn't work, let's say if it's spoofed uh, this user ID then it will no longer work, right? So this is how it knows um, whether this is actually authenticated user or is spoofed headers. So this is something you always wanna do for a production application uh, with number three. So number two is just an example. So you can I can show you now uh, how I'm using the email address to manage uh, the sessions. So let me go back to the code. Uh, one more thing I want to show you is this section. This section is when I'm interacting with the agent engine. Uh, I've talked about this in the previous one. It basically streams the queries and it gives you three important parts um, in, in, in three different chunks. This one tells you which question you've asked to the other side. This, this one gives you the SQL. The last one is kind of a, something I've added as a kind of formatted uh, thing with the data, right? So you can see I've been trying to add a bit of a CSS and HTML just to make things look a little bit better, but you get the idea. So these are the three uh, generators to return the three different parts back to the uh, the the chat function in the in the lightweight backend as you can render it in the front end. This is Docker, this is the Docker file, it's very straightforward. It just needs to install UV and then it set up the whole uh, web server, all of that stuff. And this is just the cloud build file that where you can deploy Cloud Run. Uh, this is reusable. You know, if you actually make some changes to your code, you can just run the same thing to deploy this again. Okay, I think that's all I have to show you. Uh, just kind of a quick recap on the Cloud Run deployment is: do not ever deploy um, a application like or agent unless it's explicitly for public access. So do not use the allow public access. Always go down the route uh, to use identity aware proxy slash IAP. So this would protect you from uh, any malicious attacks and it will always redirect your user to your identity provider to log in. Once you've logged in, you've got the two headers that you can extract the user email and the user ID, which allows you to use libraries like this to do additional authorization to make sure the user is the right one, is locked in, the header is not spoofed, uh, to give you the complete security uh, for your agentic applications. Okay, that's everything I have today. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.